Welcome to Revolution Against Evolution. I'm your host, Doug Sherry. I'm your co-host, Rich Gear here, and uh, Doug wants to talk about a reverse placebo effect. I am all ears, Doug. What are we talking about now? <laughs> yeah, this is an interesting thing that uh, I discussed with uh, Dr. John Sanford uh, when I was at the you know, North Carolina State uh, University. Right. Uh, conference that we it was it was called the Origin Truth Conference. That, and he, what, a couple John, weeks ago. It was a few weeks ago. Yeah, a few weeks ago. No. And uh, and John was one of the speakers, and he is uh, expert in the uh, technology re replay, uh, about plant genetics. And uh, one of the things that he has done as a researcher is uh, invented a technology called the gene gun, which is a uh, mechanism where you uh, inject. Uh, DNA into uh, uh, a plant like a like onions or uh, or corn or other things. So like he that. invented this. Yeah, he and he's wow. the inventor of of this uh, technology. Now, he and a few other researchers, but he's the main guy on the on the project, and he's the one of the brains behind the research. And so he's the one that is uh, you, know, who, you know I th think is responsible for. Uh, genetically modified GMOs, yeah. GMOs, uh, genetically modified organisms, right? And, and uh, I no. think uh, it's, su it's suffering from a uh, misnomer here because uh, it's a uh, uh, it's gotten a lot of uh, bad press. You, you see things like uh, uh, even on Himalaya pink s salt that's non-GMO. Well, it's not yeah. even possible yeah. to have that be a gen genetically modified. Why don't we explain a little bit what we mean by genetic, because Doug and I got into it a little bit before the show is, and I was talking about, it seems to me anytime you manipulate the organism that's genetically modified to some extent, but that's not what we were talking yeah, there's about. There's two different things. Right. One is that, the, well, here we were uh, uh, introducing uh, pieces of DNA into the uh, organism so that uh, it is uh, now a new uh, hybrid, uh, right. and uh, there's uh, also the way that you do, do it naturally. You just uh, right. uh, breed it, you know, the, uh, with natural breeding. Well, Doug, you know, even the evolution, there's, there's natural selection and there's artificial selection. That's right. Yeah. In a sense, GMO reminds me of an artificial. But if you hybridize by volition, in other words, you you pick two plants to come together. Uh, it seems to me you're doing that as well, but it's not the same mm -hmm. again than what you're talking. You're going, you're you're starting really at the DNA level, right. not from seeds and things like that. You're dealing with something else that would. You, are you saying that the GMOs that Dr. Sanford is working with probably would not normally uh, get together like this in, in in nature, or or are we talking about helping nature in a way? Keep uh, keep healthy organisms. What are we talking about here? Well, I think what is trying to do, what he, he's explained, it is trying to, um, you know, uh, the dominant characteristics, which are what I would call the Eden characteristics, the ones That's that good. Uh, came good. Uh, came uh, made from uh, from the beginning to be uh, functional by by God. We have all these built into our, our genome. Right. And um, plants have these, and uh, and then, but we, he also talks about the mutations that occur, and uh, we, as a, a human genome, receive about three mutations a day, and uh, and it. then the, if you uh, see how they accumulate, the, uh, they uh, these are the, not the ones that are repaired, they're not the ones that are weeded out, uh, they're the ones that are actually fixated into your They stick genome. to your ribs, huh? And so um, uh, then uh, when you get to be our, our age, Rich, <coughs> we've accumulated about 40,000 of them. Oh, great. <coughs> We're walking time bombs. That's what you're well, telling me. Well, well you know, in that's a way, that's we, true. That's why we die. You know, yeah, we that's have, true. Uh, uh, we were accumulating these uh, mutations and uh, and the other th problem is that um, not only we accumulate and mark ourselves, but when we reproduce, when we uh, have children, we pass on to the next generation about 300 of these. See, I thought this for a long time, Doug, that you know every generation, in some respects, is not superior but inferior mm -hmm. to the preceding one because of the accumulation of, uh, of genetic load, if you will. You know that you have things mm -hmm. passed on that, that you start up. It, that things are not good. I mean, I've wondered for years, Doug. We've talked about the 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 the, ge the genome and the gene gun and the artificial, the genetically modified organism. But a lot of things I'm seeing today, Doug, that I never saw when I was a kid. I'm not saying it never existed, mm -hmm. but you and I know that 
peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, PB and J's was a rite of passage when you were growing up in grade school. Yeah, now there are a lot of schools you can't even have a peanut butter sandwich because somebody might get sick and die from anaphylactic shock because of peanut allergies. Mm -hmm. I've got two people at work I know that have gluten allergies. I never heard of this growing up. I mean, Jesus says bread of life, you know, bread is a good thing. Mm -hmm. It's not anything to try to say we don't, it's not involved with wheat products. And it's, it's like, what, is this genetic load? Is this, or is this what we called earlier the reverse placebo effect? Or is it a combination? Or is it the way the food is processed? I don't know. Well, uh, there's a, you remember Pete Stoughton, he was on our show a little while ago, and he was talking about, a little bit about this uh, as well, and he was taking some uh, courses from do, uh, Dr. Henry Wright, and I was listening to some of the Wright's tapes about, uh, you know, things like fear and uh, lying and uh, all these different uh, accusation, bitterness, these things oh, I remember, yeah, yeah, right, in, yep, yep. these uh, get into our uh, our system and uh, it's the attitudes that we have uh, towards life towards uh, everything around us that uh, affect our health and uh, and what he uh, ta talked about was um, a situation where um, a lady came to him to him and said that uh, she was uh, having issues with uh, um, you know she was going to go into anaphylactic shock you know, with, that's uh, serious, yeah. With uh, 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 pesticides. And okay. so, um, and uh, he had talked with her before about this, and uh, she, she came into the, the room, and he was looking out the window, and he says, Oh, the organ man is here. Now, I told him not to come, uh, and, uh, and immediately... She, she goes into anaphylactic shock. Really? Wow. And, and what he wasn't it, there. He was, li he he was, he was lying. Yeah. And, um, and finally she came out of it and, uh, and uh, he told her uh, what had happened. And, and uh, she was mad at him. But, uh, what yeah, because she's exposed for basically psyching herself up into something that's not... See, the real problem, Doug, in all these kinds of issues is there's always some truth involved. Mm -hmm. Some people really are allergic. That's some right. Some people really have physical problems. But it's also, in our modern world, we have divorced the psyche very much from the, from the physical, so much mm -hmm. so we don't believe that the mental state, or the, if you will, the soulish part of our being, can affect the physical part. What, but doctors in the past used to know this, Doug. I remember growing mm -hmm. up, they said, you know, if you believe touching a frog would cure you of a wart, it might actually work. Mm -hmm. There's something in so powerful in our mind that you can do things. I mean, there's some, there are people that get, that, that get both healed and sick based on mm -hmm. mental attitudes. And I think that's what you're talking about by the reverse placebo. We think, because the, the, the good side, well, if we eat right, we do this, we're going to live to be a million years old. Well, yeah, back of our mind, we know nobody's going to live. You know, we're all going to die mm -hmm. no matter what we do. But the other part of it says, but I can maybe make it stretch it out and I can have quality of life for 20 or 30 years long. And that might be true to some extent. Well, I'm, in my you mind, uh, uh, thinking well is 50% of the whole equation. And that's what I was getting at. You know, the, the mental yeah, part of it. Because we, uh, if avoid. You, you have an attitude towards or life, more. towards yourself, uh, towards others, that uh, uh, God is with you, the, the, and the God of the universe who created you and made you in his image is looking out for you. You know, obviously there will be a day that you will die, but the, he also... Uh, has a purpose for your life and he uh, has something for you to do and if we uh, think well on these things then he's going to uh, make it possible for you to, uh, to to live to do that purpose and you might uh, incidentally do things that are more healthy for you anyway like instead mm -hmm. of drinking more water than pop let's say or something you know right. we're not saying there aren't things that are better for you than others there are and mm -hmm. and everybody's body is different as well so there are things that can affect one person a lot worse or better than it is for another person. The thing about it is, is there's just a lot of fear out here, Doug. We right. talked about that in that Dr. Stoughton, or I mean, not Pete Stoughton, you know, that idea of how fear rules. And it's so much a part of our culture today. 
You can't eat this. You can't do this. You can't say this. You can't walk here. I mean, there's a lot of fear involved in that, and food is a big part of that, and mm -hmm. how you live and all that stuff. I've, I, of course, for years I've always said, well, you know what? I realize that if I ate better, I probably gonna, I probably live longer. But instead of living to be 85, I might live to be 95, or instead of 95, I might live to be 105. But those last 10 years, am I really that interested? You know, the point of it mm -hmm. is, eventually I'll give you the Lord anyway. I think that about you know, and I have no statistics on this, folks, so don't call me on this like I'm trying to say this is the goal. But to me, it's about 75, 80% is genetics. And about 25% is, you know, 20, 25% maybe is what you do. I mean, if you don't eat food, period, you're going to die. So that's that's 100%. I grant you in uh, water. But uh, I, so I, much I still of it, say, you know, say you're rich, though, that the 50% of it is is between your ears. It's between, but I'm saying, yeah, but I'm saying, but but again, there are things we're born with. That there are, there are, like, there are real genetic things in people. There are people that well, no matter what they do, they're going to live longer than others. Let's talk about the, 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 the biblical worldview that's behind all this. All right, this. let's go for there. Okay. Because um, you know, we, we believe that the, in the beginning, uh, when God created the heavens and earth, and Adam and Eve, you know, God created it perfect with all the genetic uh, um, code in mind. And indeed, and even today, we find redundancy built into the right. genome a thousand times. Yep. And um, uh, Dr. Borger, I was ta talking to him, and he was uh, saying that uh, uh, he was, they were trying to identify what the genes do by knocking them out. And they remove the gene uh, using mice. Uh, and, they, and, and they knock out this gene and it still has the function. So there's oh, yeah. a backup of yeah. it. And then they knock out that gene, and they still has the function. And so <laughs> they keep trying to find what uh, what the process in the genome uh, causes the, the functionality to cease, and uh, they can't find it because there's all these bad these backup and repair Interesting, mechanisms. Interesting, yeah. And so uh, God, when when He built. Uh, life and built the genetic code. He put in all that stuff in, in it. Now we uh, then, but there is is the curse that happened at the time of Adam. When Adam sinned, he he, uh, he was to told that he needed to now toil for his food. Right. And so he uh, now we have weeds. Now we have uh, uh, thorns and thistles. There were changes that and, happened, and there was changes ch changes that happened, and so. Uh, uh, and part of what we see is the part of the curse. You have mutations that you know, knock out everything, not part of your genome out of balance. And so, uh, as they accumulate, uh, you know, uh, out of three billion uh, uh, base pairs in the genome, if we get forty thousand of them that are uh, uh, different than what they're supposed to be, that's just going to break you down <coughs> enough. You know, that becomes you know, that's still a very small percentage. But uh, maybe one of those is a, is a key one that is going to cause cause your disease. I was wondering about that, Doug. You know, in the, in before the flood, pretty much people consistently lived to be 900 some years. I mean, you had one mm -hmm. 895, except for Lamech, <coughs> Noah's grandfather, who mm -hmm. lived to be 777 years. He didn't die in the year of the flood, so he died five years early. He could have been killed. Mm -hmm. But you wonder, was there some kind of a a genetic thing that was there that maybe carried on? Because it's interestingly, right after the flood. We know there must have been some environmental reasons. Obviously, right, it was yeah. a harsher world, but there might have been some genetic things. But it drastically went down immediately. Doug Noah still lived 950, 350 years after the flood, but but his, uh, but his Shem. Shem boom 600 years. Yeah. He lost 350 years. The generation, the next generation. That's a long. And his and his son, our facts had went to 424 or something like that. Right. He went knocked right down. So things were beginning to happen. We also know that this is like people over the years, we've answered this question over the years, and well, you know, like where did Cain get his wife, you know, well he married his sister. And people are horrified until they understand that close personal marriage was not restricted, proscribed, not prescribed, proscribed, forbidden, until the time of Moses. Mm -hmm. People don't understand that, we didn't have the, but they were getting load, but it was very small, because Adam and Eve were perfect. Mm -hmm. And even after the curse, they lived 900, Adam lived 930 years. You know, so total. So there's 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 things that really amazing that they're breaking down. So there's real issues, and then there's psychological issues or the mental right. things. And right. I think yeah. that's what we're dealing with here. There's so many mental factors that cause us to be afraid of what we eat, afraid mm -hmm. of doing things. And and I'm going really, 
knowing there's real things is not the same thing as fearing everything that is. You yeah, know? Well, there's a big bondage in this. You know, if you uh, and I wanted to, uh, and I got this last, but I want to get go get into this right right away and get into the scripture. Okay, go for it. It's uh, Romans chapter fourteen, and I was reading this, and I said, this sounds like the reverse placebo effect. Oh. And I, I, I okay. emailed Dr. Sanford and told him about it. And he says, um, in a sense, I think you're right. And so uh, here's what it says in Romans chapter 14. It says, Him that is weak in the faith, receive ye, but not to doubtful disputations. For one believeth that he may eat all things, another who is weak eateth herbs. And let not him who that eateth, eateth despise him that eateth not. And let not him that eateth not judge him that eateth, for God has received him. Who art thou that judgest another man's servant? In his own master he stands or falls. Yet he'll be, but he shall be holden up, for God is able to make him stand. One man esteems one day above another, another esteems it every day alike. Let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. He, regarded, he that regarded the day, regardeth it unto the Lord. He regardeth not the day, and the Lord he doth not regard it. He that eateth, eateth to the Lord, for he gives God thanks. And he that eateth not yet to the Lord, he eateth not and gives God thanks. For none of us lives to himself, and no, no man dies to himself. For whether we live, we live unto the Lord, or whether we die, we die unto the Lord. Whether we live, therefore, or die, we are the Lord's. So you know, this is a interesting scripture to me. Uh, well, uh, I, for years I've quoted, I, remember, I ran into some vegetarians, and I go, well, that's fine. If you, if you want to be persuaded, go ahead. I said, but I, my Bible says, let those who are weak in the faith eat vegetables. I like vegetables, but I like meat too, you know? And the point of it is, mm -hmm. is that, but you could be, if you want to be a vegetarian, that's fine, but don't do it, don't do it for religious reasons. If you want to do it for health reasons for yourself, fine, but don't try to convince me that I can't have a hamburger or a hot dog from time to time. Uh, the thing about it is, let those be persuaded in their own mind, is I think what mm -hmm. he said. And say they with what day you regard, and some people regard one day more than another, and I, I pretty much regard them all the same. You know, they're all under the Lord. I'm, I'm right. more that yeah. way, you know? Yeah, the, you know, that's a scripture that I, I use. Uh, when, uh, you know, there's a lot of people who... Uh, mm, mm, Talk about the seventh day and the. Oh yeah, we, we have yeah, and they're good people, but yeah, they have, you know, they're, they're the seventh day and seventh day Adventists, seven day Baptists, and mm -hmm. uh, but I said you know and it's okay. The Bible Paul says it's okay if you want to do that. It just, yeah, well, we worship God here on Tuesdays. So. Yeah, I'm just saying to <laughs> you know, me, this is cool. whenever you get more than two or three people gathered, you got church. That's the way it is. You know, that's mm -hmm. the way that's what I feel. But I think it's interesting, Doug. We we've talked about the mental aspect. The, the actual geno genomic aspect of it, and um, it, you had a because uh, you had um, some because uh, Dr. Sanford is actually one of the guys involved in the genetic mo gen genetically modified organisms, and right. another person you respect as well who was against G gen GMOs, you know. Right. And you said something that's very interesting before the show is because I think people out there, it's the Frankenstein's monster thing they're afraid of, and yeah, I think right. a lot of times they don't really know what they're talking about. You know, I'm not saying to not be examine what it is, but look to see what it really what we're talking about when you say a genetically modified organism. And I think the idea, Doug, it's like when you do it naturally when you modify an organism. That's not that's not really what GMOs are talking about primarily. Mm -hmm. But in a sense, that is a genetically modified organism because you're intellectually putting these two things together that may not have come together in nature. In fact, in nature, mm -hmm. Doug, we've been finding out through this fall of man, things tend to break down. That's right. Things yeah. are going backward. They're going the wrong way. So without our help and our intervention, they're not going to not going to go. They're not going to yeah. go good eventually. Now, again, like you said, or again, I think very good. God has built into us a lot of backup redundancies, backup systems. Right, yeah. I think that's why we're not extinct 300 times over as it is, you know, because mm -hmm. of all the genetic load, because things can still function. Nevertheless, there are things that really accumulate and cause problems, and we can mitigate some of that a little bit. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that mm -hmm. if, if uh, you know, we've got permission to do a lot of things. And I don't, I, you know, if it, it makes the organism healthier, mm -hmm. it makes it taste better, mm -hmm. uh, to, to and it makes it 
whatever you know if, what, what why is that such a bad thing Doug right and what uh, we have to uh, you know I'm doing my research on this uh, as we speak and I want to right. be able to uh, verify uh, is the process where we're t taking and intervening veining into the God's created thing uh, to, to make try to make it better uh, is that a good good thing and uh, and one of the things that there's all these trade-offs you know we, we oh, have yeah. some of the GMO, GMOs that uh, help uh, the organ the uh, the corn become resistant to uh, gl glyphosate, which is the uh, Roundup. Uh, oh yeah, and, and and so then the question, and I think rightly so, uh, is um, is that a good idea to uh, to have uh, Roundup in your food? And 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 there's certain uh, places where uh, the this isn't working on the hybrid anymore. The hybrid is getting mutated. Yeah, and so it's no longer uh, uh, resistant to uh, glyphosate, and so they're using Agent Orange to, to kill the. And weeds. those are things you have to be concerned about, Doug. But <coughs> as I say, organisms are mutating no matter what we right. do. Right. Yeah, and they are. And, so and so, uh, and the the issue is that uh, uh, these things that are mutating are really, uh, and and the other thing I thought about was uh, weeds, you know. I actually brought this doctor that I just uh, told you about uh, a couple uh, a uh, fillery seed and a uh, and a uh, wild oat seed. Yeah. And uh, I showed them to him and I gave him uh, let him take them and uh, told him how how they work. You know, the, the fillery seed is a, a Fibonacci spiral that yeah we've used that on our the, show in a while uh, back in the ground and the seed will it'll dig in the ground you know and then the, the wild oat seed will scoot itself across the ground <laughs> you know, if, uh, with the heat and cold and so I was showing them that but I asked the, the question and uh, I think I already th know the answer is that uh, these are weeds and yeah, why does God have some of his most uh, unique designs in weeds. And most adaptive and uh, most uh, you know, resistant the bird to oxen, disease. Uh, uh, you know, for propagation, it, uh, no wonder it propagates. A lot of the things that we don't like in our environment, that uh, because there's, it's so uh, healthy and it takes over. Yeah. Uh, some of the more oh. desirable. How about loose strife? What's that? The purple, purple root? loose strife. Oh boy, that was supposed to help out. Few, that was back in the '60s or when did they put they under to wipe out one plant and then whip it off? You know, to me, a, a thing that might be. Uh, for myself, as I talked about this subject about what would be permissible or, or not good to do, I always think of the biblical thing that the <coughs> Lord, when He created stuff, He made it after its kind. Mm -hmm. So I've heard about GMOs where they've like introducing animal protein in plant fiber. That to me would seem to be a violation of that. Yeah, you know, that would not be a good. I'm not saying I don't. And I could be totally wrong. This may be not. Maybe they're not doing this. It may be some science fiction movie or thing I've read. But I seem to me they. I've read about stuff where they're actually introducing different things, or they're putting things in some of the food that's not really good in the sense of, uh, and they're interbreeding things that are not not of its kind. It's, you know, it's in a sense you're making a monster, you know. But I don't know whether it is or not. But Anything outside of that, Doug, if you make something resistant to some disease that makes it healthier mm -hmm. for the plant, but, it, but of course, we're eating that. Is it going to be healthier? for Those are, those are things that are going to have to be determined through well, time, Doug. Uh, there, there's another side of the, the thing about weeds is that, uh, in my mind, weeds are uh, things that God has, has designed, uh, and, but we haven't yet either dis discovered the function of them, uh, of why God designed them, and uh, and maybe they're uh, good for a certain purpose, and we just haven't. Uh, well, well, there's also the other idea that may have been used for something else before the fall. <coughs> yeah, right. And they got corrupted at the fall. Yeah, you know, those things we may never know, but it's fun to tr try to try to explain it and find it. Yeah, it's like dandel uh, when I mentioned that to him, he said, "Well, you know, dandelions, you get uh, that's a, a lot of good stuff. You can get all dandelions. It's good for you." Yeah, you know? well, a lot of stuff is good. That's a lot of the greens, dandelion the wine. wine. Yeah, people yeah, like that. I've never had that. You ever had that, Doug? I've never had that. I guess it's pretty nasty. I've never had it. <laughs> well, I, I don't know. I'm not a big big wine guy. But uh, anyway, um, so Doug, 
what, what do you want? What do you want the people to take away from here? You know, I mean, if, well, if anything, well, there's okay. a, there's another piece of this is that there's one more uh, okay. is uh, inbreeding is uh, one of the things that really causes express expresses uh, mutated traits. Right. And so, um, you know, like uh, Dr. Sandler was talking about Hobbit Man uh, being on an island in Indonesia. Right. Well, it's the island effect where you have inbreeding within uh, uh, certain tribes and families that you get this uh, dwarfism and stunted growth. And um, he says that uh, um, part of the reason for uh, hybrids is to uh, mitigate that. It's, uh, right. you, know, you know, the farther apart that you are in terms of relationship, uh, the less chance you're going to have for uh, for this in, uh, this in See, once place. it was forbidden, and now we're talking about in the in the human thing, but I think it works the same way with with animals to some mm -hmm. extent. Uh, the cheetah is about ready to go extinct because there's right. only one there's only one line. Right, and yeah. some of the higher animals, I don't think the cheetah is going to make it unless they figure out some way to maybe hybridize it with a jaguar or something, or mm -hmm. something that could breed with them. I, or I don't know. But my point is, I'd, it'd be sad to see that that majestic creature got die out. But it's too inbred. Right. And after the after the fall, the accumulation of mutations and those things began. To, it began to it, it got so bad that close personal uh, relations, you know, breeding is a bad bad thing and right. so hybridizing is always good people i remember years and years ago they would talk about people why craziness could never be racist we believe we're all kind from one blood uh adam and eve and Noah and his three sons but realizing when back in the 60s when the, the interracial marriage was issue was a lot more questionable and they go what do you think about can a black guy marry a a, a, a white woman or a woman i says absolutely i says culturally is where you have the problem but genetically it's probably mm -hmm. a, a healthy way to go it's just right. that God has built a lot of protections in, so even if two white guys marry two black, you know, you're, or two black, or white folks marry, then you can have a healthy offspring. But that whole idea, Doug, oh, the accumulation of mutations is, is, so that's the fourth piece of the puzzle you're talking about. Yeah, and right? one last piece is that our bodies are built into uh, the tre tremendous capabilities to process food. So oh, it yeah. breaks, uh, whatever it was uh, genetically done, it breaks it down into the amino acids and the uh, nucleotides uh, and then reassembles them in your body. And so That's whatever amazing. order it was uh, in, in the food that you ate, it really doesn't make that much difference. I receive everything with Thanksgiving and offering. Well, there you That's go. That's my way of going when it comes to eating food. Well, we ho hope you enjoyed <laughs> our, our show tonight. We'll uh, see you next time on Revolution Against Evolution.